Hey everyone, Kevin from MechanicalAdvantage.com. I wanted to use this video to talk about some sketching tips. We're going to talk about some things that maybe we, we didn't know that some of the commands could do, some of the different right-click options, and some different keyboard uh, options that we can do to, to make things happen in different ways. So I have two shapes. I have this shape that I want to draw, and I have an example, something like this, that I also wanted to show. Let's start out with this shape first. Now you can see it's kind of like a little cam lobe or something. It's got a 1.75 radius on one end, a one inch radius on the other end. The two centers are horizontally aligned with each other. And the there's a two and a half inch center to center dimension controlling that to fully constrain the sketch. So we're going to work on using some of the tools in Fusion to reduplicate drawing this. We're going to draw it in a couple different ways. I'm going to start a new design. And from the sketch menu, I'm going to choose to do a circle center diameter circle. I'm going to place my sketch on the front plane. So when it highlights white, I'm going to click on it, and now I know I'm drawing on that plane. I want my left circle to be anchored to the origin point. So when I move my mouse to that origin point, you see that square appears. That lets me know that when I click there, that Fusion is going to lock the center to the origin. So I'm going to click, and I'm going to drag out. I get the opportunity to dimension this circle right now. But as you note, it's giving me a diameter, and on the sketch that I was showing, we have a radius dimension. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag out a rough circle. I'm going to come over and drag out another rough circle. Not being too careful where I place it or its size yet. And I do know that the two centers are horizontally aligned, so I'm going to use the horizontal constraint to click on the origin and the center of the circle, and now those two centers are lined up. So now what I'd like to do is add some dimensions. From the sketch menu, I'm gonna go and choose sketch dimension or D on the keyboard. And I'm gonna click on the left-hand circle. And when I do, you notice it's giving me a diameter of 3.84. But what I, what I really want is a radius. So before I place this, I can right-click and choose to give me a radius dimension instead of a diameter. Now you can see it says radius 1.92. I'm gonna left-click to place it and type in 1.75. And we'll go ahead and hit enter. Now let's say that we hit D on our keyboard again and we dimension this other side. And we place the dimension, I'm going to call this one inch. It's one inch diameter when I really want it to be one inch radius. And I didn't go through and I didn't change that. What I can do is right click on the dimension and toggle it to a radius even after I've placed it. And now I just simply double click on it and adjust that dimension to be one inch. And now I've got that set up. Okay. We don't have the center to center distance yet. We're going to add that in a little bit. What I'd like to talk about now is adding the line that connects these, these circles. So what I could do is start the line command and draw a line from circle to circle like that. You can see you got one tangent and one it didn't. So now I could use the tangent command and click on the line in the circle. And now those two are tangent. And I could do the same thing down here. So I'm just going to click here and here. It's coincident on both points, but it's not tangent. I'd have to start the tangent command again click on this, the line in the circle and the line in the other circle. And now everything is, is tangent on where the two lines meet the two circles. However, that was a lot of mouse clicks. So I'm going to delete those off and see if there's a different way we can do this. I'm going to start the line command and I'm going to put my, my line on the circle somewhere. I don't care exactly where it's at. I just want to see that X letting me know that I'm going to be coincident. When I see that X, I'm going to left click and hold. And when I move my mouse, you can see anywhere I move my mouse now, the line is tangent to the circle that I'm drawing to. When I go to do the second circle, as I move my mouse around the circle, eventually I'll see the second tangent symbol appear. And when I let go, now you can see that I have two tangent symbols um, that were created automatically. Uh, it took a little input from me, but it's much easier than going and adding those tangent constraints manually. The other thing we can do is if I click on this circle, now I'm not holding down the mouse key anymore. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to hold the shift button down. Holding the shift button down will also make your line tangent to wherever you start. When I drag this out, I just look for that second tangent command, click, and now I've got the two tangents. I can choose the trim or not. I think I will in this case. So from the sketch menu, I'm going to go and I'm going to choose the trim command. I'm going to click on the two entities that I'd like to go away. And now everything's all trimmed out. I can do a D for dimension again and click on the two centers. Drag up and enter my 
two inch value and there is my uh, there is my sketch I can't I think I did too yeah 2.5 so we'll just double click that and make that 2.5 inches and now I'm ready to extrude that so that's one method we can go ahead and draw this with I'm gonna delete this off and we're gonna draw this a different way so the line command draws lines but what people often don't know is that the line command will all, can also draw an arc. So I'm going to draw a line from the origin. I'm going to drag straight up. And when I get to the end point, I'm going to click and I'm going to hold the left mouse button down. Now I'm going to swing the direction I want to go. And you can see now we're drawing an arc. And when I let go, we're back into the line command. And if I were to click and hold again, we could be back into an arc. So you can toggle between line and arc whether you hold the mouse button or if you click and let go and then click to end it. So uh, if you have any questions on that, let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to make another little demonstration about how to do that. So to draw the same kind of a shape that I was just showing, I'm going to start out by drawing one of the lines. So I'm going to click a line from there to there. Now I'm going to left click and hold, swing into my arc. I'm going to let go. I'm going to come out, left click and hold. I'm going to swing it all the way around to that to that point. Now, I didn't do a very good job. I only have two tangent constraints on here, so I have to add two tangent constraints manually. There, 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 and there. I'll add a coincident constraint between the center and the origin, and a horizontal constraint between the center and the origin again to get everything squared up. Now I can do D on my keyboard for dimension. We'll type in the 1.75 and because that's an arc, it automatically assumed it's going to be a radius. We'll do the same thing over here, make this a one inch radius. And then dimension between the two centers, the 2.5. So there's an alternate way we can go ahead and draw that out, uh, just using the line command. I didn't use the circle or arc command to do any of that. I drew that entire thing with the line command. Okay, so let's go take a look at the other shape. So this other shape is just a circle. If we edit the sketch, we can see how I drew this. I'm going to start out showing you this method down here and, and the amount of work that goes into it versus the method that I drew this top part. So you can see we've got a two inch diameter circle. We're two inches from the origin each way. Um, and then we've got a 60 degree included angle between these two, these two lines. So let's go start a new design. I'm going to sketch a circle, center diameter circle. I'm going to click on the front plane, drag this out, and right away I can go ahead and make this two inches since we wanted a two inch diameter. I'm going to draw that kind of bow tie shape on the bottom and kind of go about it doing it the long way. So the way that I would do that is I would draw a line from the origin to the circle, and then from the origin to the circle again. And already I made a little mistake. I made those perpendicular, so I'm just gonna delete that constraint out. Now I can move one independently of the other. I'm gonna move where this two inch diameter dimension is appearing as well. I'm going to draw a construction line from the center down. I wanna use this as my line of symmetry. So I'm gonna make that a construction line by clicking on it and then going to my sketch palette and choosing construction. And I'm going to use a symmetry constraint now to click on this line and this line symmetrical to my construction line. Now as I move one, the other one moves the same way. I'm going to D for dimension and dimension the angle here to be 60 degrees. And that's the basis I need for completing this. Somehow I untoggle those from construction, so we'll just remake them construction again. Now I'm going to start my line, and all I really care about is that I'm coincident to the endpoints. I'm going to come up and drag the rest of this out like that. I'll make this bottom line horizontal, and then I want to use the collinear constraint between the construction and the other line, and the construction and this other line here. One more dimension, D for dimension. I click on the circle and the bottom edge, drag this over, set that dimension to be 2. And there we have, if we look at this sketch, you can see the same thing, 60 degrees, two inches, uh, everything seems to be the exact same. Drawing these construction lines and doing all that was a bit more tedious than I'd like it to be though. So in the same way, if I draw a circle 
and I get over the uh, a line, if I draw a line that's coincident to a circle and I left click and hold, the mouse, uh, the line is staying tangent anywhere I position the mouse. I can draw a line that's perpendicular to a circle depending on where I start the circle. So if I start the line command and I come to the quadrant, that'd be the north, south, east, or west portion of the circle, and I left click and hold, now you can see that instead of getting a tangent circle, I'm getting a perpendicular circle. This only works if your mouse is somewhere approximately at one of the quadrants of the circle. So there's, there's a perpendicular line. I'm going to hit line on my keyboard again, L for line, and I'm going to come down to this other quadrant point and drag out, and now you can see that there's another line that's perpendicular to the circle no matter where I move it. So I'm going to delete that off. I'm going to start the line command one more time. I'm going to click here and drag up. I'm just going to kind of move over and place my line, hit escape. I'm going to hit L on my keyboard again, come to the tangent point, drag up, drag over. You can see the perpendicular symbols appearing. I'm going to let go of that. Now I'm perpendicular. I want to make both of these lengths equal. And then I'm going to draw a line from point to point. And this line is uh, going to be horizontal in a second as soon as I make this line and this line symmetric to my construction line. Now that is geometrically horizontal by because it has to be. I'm going to do D on my keyboard, dimension my two lines, place that angle dimension and make it 60. And I have one more dimension to go. I'm going to hit D on my keyboard and go from the center to the vertical line. And I'm going to go ahead and place it. Now, one other little trick we can do is I could type in 2 here, but let's say I want the top and the bottom to always be equal no matter what we change. While this is highlighted blue, I'm going to go and left click on the dimension below. When you can see, it renames that dimension to be dimension 3. It's setting that dimension equal to dimension 3, which is this 2-inch dimension right here. So when I hit enter, there we go. We have a lot less work to go ahead and draw this top side as opposed to the bottom side. And I also link these dimensions together. You can tell that because this dimension says fx. It's a function of another dimension. So if I went and double clicked on this dimension and changed it to be 2.5 inches and hit the Enter key, notice that the other dimension automatically updates. So I don't have to remember to change both of them. So I hope we covered a few things in this video that you weren't aware that Fusion was able to do. Uh, the line can draw arcs by left clicking and holding the line at the end, at the end point of a line. You can right click while dimensioning to toggle between radius and diameter. And holding down your left mouse button while drawing lines on circles or arcs will give you different results. If you have any questions, please go ahead and let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to take care of anything uh, that you have a question about. So thanks for watching and uh, have a good day.